Hello everyone, I am Veos and welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program video! You know, I can't help but wonder if I'm part of a dying channel breed for Kerbal Space Program. There's only a handful of us out there left. But that's okay, I still have a bunch of stuff I want to do with this game. And in today's video, we are building a Rocket SSTO. A VTOL Rocket SSTO. Now, why would I buy, buy right, rarely, okay? <laughs> why would I build a rocket VTOL SSTO instead of building an air-breathing rocket or air-breathing jet combination, you know, air-breathing, basically air-breathing. Why wouldn't I build an air-breathing VTOL SSTO? It's because I do not see this particular craft working only on Kerbin or Lathe. I wanted to build this craft to be able to visit moons and stuff and be able to land on those moons and have plots of plenty of Delta V. Did I just say plots? Anyway, fun fact, if you have enough Delta V rocket wise to get off of the surface of Kerbin, you can pretty much land everywhere except for Eve and Jewel, of course, because, you know, there's no ground at all. Huh. Now this wasn't going to be just a VTOL SSTO, this was going to be a cargo ship of some kind, kind of like Serenity, you know, in Firefly. I was inspired to make a VTOL cargo SSTO because of Serenity and Firefly. I like that whole universe where the solar system has been colonized, there's a bunch of traffic, cargo, and all this other good stuff, stations, buildings, colonies, outposts, you name it. And so eventually a cargo ship of some kind would live out its usefulness or life from whatever company that made it or or bought it or whatever and it end up in some sort of used spaceship yard and here comes along a ragtag crew and they find it it's for cheap it's a little bit of a fixer-upper but they end up buying it and then using it to travel the verse they would pick up odd contract jobs here and there to deliver goods and stuff but every so often they would kind of sidetrack and find wrecks or explore derelicts and stuff like that or even on occasion maybe help out a small little town that was having some raider problems now unlike the futuristic sci-fi show firefly with the technology that was on board the serenity spacecraft we don't got that shit on this ksp platform so in order to make a fully rocket ssto vtol that carried goods and supplies into space, I had to do what I could with KSB's limited technology. But Veos, you can download mods that give you all this other cool stuff and new parts and blah da 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 I, I, yeah, yeah, I get it, I get it, and, and that sounds great and all, but... I try to keep everything stock, or DLC, which in my opinion is stock because it was made by Squad. The reason being is that if there's any new players that see my videos, they can can recreate what I have without having to search for different parts from different mods on different platforms. All the parts that I use are stock in DLC, so if you wanted to, you could either follow along or pause the frame and see what I used and be able to make your own without worrying about, oh, we're, well, where did this part come from? Or where did that part come from? And stuff like that. The only mods I use are to beautify KSP when it comes to things like decals, paints, and the universe, and the clouds, and trees, and all that other stuff. It's just to make it look pretty, but it's not meant to change the aerodynamics or anything of that nature. Unless we're talking about the ocean. That's the only thing that aerodynamically changes, is when you use Scatterer, it changes the, the ocean's characteristics mechanically, so you can dive underwater and stuff like that without it being so weirdly buoyant that it shoots your shit into space. If you go down too deep and all that stuff, which is the stock version of the ocean, unfortunately, but, you know, I mean, I still like the stock version of the ocean. It's fine. It's very flat, but I prefer the, the Scatterer. I just prefer scatter. Anyway, being that it was going to be a rocket SSTO means that we're going to need a lot of fuel for this sucker. Especially on a high G, thick atmosphere world like Kerbin. Well, I, I say high G, but you know, compared to the moons that are out there where you can, you know, just pretty much launch something into space by sneezing, it, it's considered a lot. Not like the extreme EVE version of a lot, but it's enough to make a big difference. So having so much fuel on this thing means that we really can't have a lot when it comes to carrying stuff, uh, cargo-wise. Unless, of course, we make this thing a huge, gigantic behemoth, but it's like, it, the, wh why? I'm trying to make this thing, in, in a sense, 
cheap enough to where an actual small little crew could afford it in the first place, not something so big you can't. So the craft itself would have to be something relatively small, so capable of carrying goods and supplies rather than like, you know, giant materials. So I could see a ship like this carrying stuff like maybe medical supplies or weapons or crates of some kind, goods, maybe food. Basically small cargo, but expensive cargo to, you know, like, like an express craft of some kind, going, taking stuff somewhere really quickly. So definitely not a trucker, a space trucker in a sense, but more like a space delivery in a, uh, like a small little delivery truck or something like that, eh, something. Now I tried putting the cargo containers on the sides at first, but that didn't really, it does, you know, I was like, eh, it doesn't really work very well. Then I tried like a dual uh, haul design, putting the cargo bay on the bottom or the top, because cargo's funny. It, it's, it's a lot of mass in one spot that can disappear quickly, so your center of mass can change rapidly. Next, I tried to put the cargo bay like in the back, like a pickup truck, but this, of course, in turn turned into the same problem that I was having, was the center of mass would change rapidly once the cargo was gone. Inevitably, I had to choose the split design, having cargo up in front and cargo up in back. This would allow the center of mass to pretty much stay the same no matter what. Now for VTOL crafts, the center of mass is crucially important when it comes to, well, of course, VTOL. You need to have that center of mass stay there at almost all times, regardless if your craft is empty or full of cargo. Now there is a mod that I've that I've been, uh, that, that, well, bleh, 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 the fuck? It's a mod that kind of keeps your craft in a VTOL, it, it, it wherever the engines are, the craft will allow it to VTOL itself uh, level all the time. Forgot what was, I think it's TAC, T-A-C, or something like that. I've yet to download this mod, but just like the other mods that I've, you know, taken forever to download, I do see myself downloading this mod if it does exactly what I think it does, and that is VTOL. But until then, when you're building these things, that center of mass cannot move or barely move. If it moves too much to the back or the front, suddenly you're having a lot of problems, even with a lot of reaction wheels. It can be be a real bitch. Now granted the design of having half and half with cargo up front and cargo in back did look a little weird. I would have rather liked all the cockpit stuff to be up front and all the utility stuff to be in back but I didn't have that option in this case so I had to go with what I had. In order to flush it out a little better I brought the wings up front so it wasn't didn't look like a, you know some sort of weird fuselage sticking out all by there by itself. It had more of a triangle uh, angular design something to help it blend in a lot better than just having something sticking out there in the front whoa where's this going but all in all I think it, it I think it looks good I think it looks good it can't it came together well I mean if, if I had more of an option to put the, the the control center in front and the cargo in the back yeah but you know it is what it is it, I think it came out okay
But anyways, thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for being a part of this channel. If you liked what you saw, please leave a like. And if you loved what you saw, consider subscribing. We also have a membership program. If you become a member, you get cool little emojis and badges and stuff next to your name. Pretty cool. Check it out. Also, don't forget to click down that bell notification. Because if you don't, like I said before, in so many of my videos, YouTube will not notify you when I upload something. For whatever reason, they thought that that would be a great idea. But anyways, love you all. Stay safe. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. Bye-bye.